Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're continuing Ryzen Laptop Week and I've got the Lenovo IdeaPad back out on the desk because I wanted to run a couple of other applications that people often ask about to set a baseline as to what you can expect out of a low-cost Ryzen 5 based laptop. Uh, this one has an R5 2500U processor inside. It's under $400. As you'll see in the reviews that we've been doing this week, they're great for playing games. They're not going to rival a gaming laptop, but if you get your settings set properly, you can often play fairly recent games at around 30 frames per second. Not bad. And that graphical horsepower can actually be used in other applications as well. Uh, so today we're going to be looking at Photoshop, uh, Adobe Premiere for video editing. We'll be looking at OBS for game capture and streaming and just regular video streaming for that matter. Uh, we'll look at the Dolphin emulator for some higher end emulation along with a PS2 emulator as well. And we'll see what the Ryzen platform can do for very little money. And this will set the baseline so that if people have questions in the future, we can point them at this video and of course as the Ryzen technology matures we'll update this video over time. Now I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that the laptop we're using today here is something I paid for with my own funds. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this overview nor is anyone reviewing or approving it before it gets uploaded. I should add though that Lenovo has been a past sponsor here on the channel but they're not sponsoring this video. So let's get into it now and see what we can do on this very low-cost Ryzen platform. All right, so let's load up Adobe Premiere first and see how this does with video editing. Uh, now, I am running the uh, project off of an external solid state drive just because our storage at the moment on this computer is limited. Uh, but as you'll see in the full review, you can actually upgrade these things fairly easily, especially compared against uh, other more expensive devices. Uh, now, I am not a Premiere person. I use uh, Final Cut Pro. Um, so I am not as proficient at Premiere as perhaps some other folks on YouTube and other video platforms might be, but my friend Jake, who helps me here on the channel, uh, did set me up with a project here with some uh, overlays and things just to see how things work. Now I'm purposely uh, not rendering any of this project so we can get a feel for how it will work with uh, just raw video going in. Uh, we did load in 4K 60 frames per second video here, and we'll play it back and see how it does. As you can see, it's stuttering a little bit with no rendering here. It's trying to render in real time. Um, but you know what? It's pretty usable. We've got some transitions that we baked in here as well. And you can see how those are working there. So you may not get perfect frame playback, but I think if you're looking to do some editing on here, I think it's going to work out just fine for you, especially once you render out some of those proxy files. That will certainly speed up everything quite a bit. Uh, but this is all 4K 60 video that came off of my iPhone. But you are going to notice some performance issues on exports. Uh, this 40 second clip took about six minutes to export using the Adobe Media Encoder. Uh, we went from 4K 60 to 1080p 60 with an H.264 profile, just a single pass here, so it should be a pretty quick export normally. Part of the problem was that the Adobe Media Encoder did not allow us to use hardware acceleration on this configuration, so the export and rendering for that matter will probably be areas where you'll be waiting quite a bit versus a more expensive computer. All right, let's load up Photoshop now and see how everything works. Now again, you wanna keep your expectations in check here. This is a low cost laptop. You're not gonna be editing multi gigabyte image files with thousands of layers and everything else. This is going to be more of a basic editing tool, but one that I think can accomplish a lot of what people might wanna do in Photoshop. So for example, uh, what I wanna do is get rid of this uh, poll here. So I'm just going to make a selection. I'm going to get my right mouse button going here. Uh, the left mouse button, I should say. Uh, we're going to select that poll. I'm going to hit the backspace key and do a content aware fill. This is one of the more advanced Photoshop features that uh, does require some uh, crunching. And we'll let that run here for a second. Now, if you've got a faster computer, of course, this would happen a lot quicker. Uh, but there you go. It was able to uh, remove that without too many issues here. Uh, we can go in and make some adjustments to the curves maybe and see how fast things react to that. Um, so I'll grab this and just kind of move things around and just start uh, playing around here a little bit just to get a sense as to the real-time reaction here. So it's a good basic tool here. Again, $375 to get uh, some functional Photoshop and video editing here. 
I think is a pretty good deal. And again, if you are keeping your expectations in line, I think you'll be very pleased with what you're going to get for the price point. Let's take a look now at OBS and see what it can do with real-time video. All right, so I set up a little OBS lab here. Uh, what I've got is my Nintendo Switch, which is feeding video into the laptop with an Elgato Cam Link. And this is an interesting device because the Cam Link uh, doesn't do anything to the video. It is bringing in raw 1080p 60 video, and the computer is having to deal with that. And a lot of times, lower powered computers have a really hard time keeping up. Now, if you look at the lower right hand portion of the screen, uh, you'll see what kind of overhead we're dealing with right now. So the CPU is about 5% uh, with this 1080p 60 video coming in full screen. And what I want to do here in OBS is start recording. I can't stream out at the moment because I am actually doing a live stream as I'm recording this video, but recording is a very similar process in that it's going to transcode the video into something smaller. So when I hit record here, uh, you'll see it's doing an H.264 recording. Our CPU utilization has gone up to about 15% or so, but we still have plenty of room here uh, to do other things. And I was really, really, really impressed with uh, what is happening here with a $375 computer. We're able to run this video full speed at 1080p 60 and record it or stream it uh, without any kind of lag or issues at all, which is just amazing to me. Uh, now, what I also have here is an overlay uh, running with uh, the video source from the Switch and me on the computer's webcam. Uh, that is doing just fine. Again, we're still at about 15% here with the recording going. And then I also brought in a third source, my studio camera, also over HDMI with a Magwell capture device. And as you can see here, it's keeping up just fine as we're switching between all of these scenes. And it just is, re again, remarkable to me that we're doing this on a computer that is well south of 500 bucks. So it's really doing quite well. Uh, OBS supports AMD for hardware acceleration, even with these lower cost Ryzen chips. And it's just a remarkable experience here to play around with OBS on something uh, so low cost. Now, I think if you were to start doing chroma key, you know, green screen effects and that sort of thing, you'll certainly eat into the CPU a bit more. Uh, but really, with multiple video sources here uh, running at this frame rate, uh, to be able to do this and transcode the video in real time to a recording is just pretty, pretty cool. So I'm going to stop the recording here real quick. Uh, let's close out of OBS and let's load up that file that we just recorded and see how it came out. So here it is here. Uh, we'll just start playing it. Now I'm recording this video at 30 frames per second, so it's not going to give you the full effect, but I might just put this up on my extras channel so you can get a feel for it. Um, but it's running here full speed. It doesn't look like there's any drop frames or anything as it is uh, playing back. So it looks like it was able to record everything perfectly. Uh, this, of course, is H.264. I think I set the bit rate to like 5 megabits per second. So it's really kind of replicating what you would have on a live stream. And I'm just going to fast forward here a little bit to when we started switching scenes because that would be an area where we might detect some lag. Uh, so there you go. It seems to be... Uh, working pretty nicely here for recording and real-time video capturing and production. And again, just really, really cool what you can do uh, with one of these low-end devices. And there's the three up there, no problems at all. So let's move on to some more fun stuff. We've got the GameCube emulator Dolphin running on the machine right now. And I always like to uh, run Star Wars Rogue Leader. Uh, which is one of the more challenging games you can run on the Dolphin emulator. And it's actually doing okay here on this hardware. Not perfect. Uh, one of the things that you'll notice with this game is that it often will run really sluggishly and laggy when you first get it going. And then after it gets all of its shaders loaded in, it speeds up. So you'll see it kind of lagging here and there, but it will eventually kind of catch up and start running more smoothly the longer you play it. Generally, I'm seeing frame rates around 40 to 45 frames per second with this game, sometimes going up a little bit higher than that. 
Uh, but this is really good for low-end hardware, and there's a bunch of other GameCube games that I think will do better uh, on this platform versus uh, Rogue Leader, which will even uh, challenge some pretty high-end devices. So all together here, I think you'll have a lot of fun playing with uh, low-end emulators, of course, but even some of the higher ones, too. All right, one last thing to check out, and that is the PCSX2 emulator, which is, of course, a PlayStation 2 emulator for Windows, and I've got Burnout 3 running right now. Uh, and by the way, I'm running both this and Dolphin at their default settings, basically at the uh, 640 by 480 resolution or thereabouts, just to get uh, the baseline. This one isn't doing as well. As you can see, we've got some issues in the emulation insofar as the sky not being on screen. Uh, the rest of the game seems to be playing okay, but we're running only about 50 to 70 percent of full speed here, even at the lowest resolution. So there's probably some settings that we need to tweak on here. Uh, we did do a couple of things before we started shooting, like changing to OpenGL and changing some of the Direct 3D modes. Uh, nothing was really getting us any better performance, so we kind of left it at the default uh, DirectX 9 here. So if you have some tips on improving PS2 performance, uh, maybe we'll revisit that in an upcoming video. But by and large, uh, the PS2 emulation, for this game at least, isn't all that great. But of course, it does vary quite a bit from one game to the other. So you'll probably need to tweak things a lot more here uh, on the PS2 side. But overall, uh, very nicely performing laptop here for its low price, especially with OBS. That really surprised me by how well uh, OBS was functioning on here. So if you're in the market for something well under $500, you'll do well with one of these Ryzen 5 based machines. Uh, we've got a full playlist down below so you can see all of the ones that I have looked at. If you see any others out there that are coming in at that sub $500 price tag, let me know. We'll try to get more in and review them uh, because, again, I've been really, really pleased with what we're seeing out of these things for the price point, and it's a great time to get one uh, if you are in need of a primary laptop or maybe a secondary one to back up some of the other stuff that you're doing in your own particular workstation. So that's going to do it here for the look at the baseline performance out of these Ryzen chips. I'm sure we are missing things, so let me know what you'd like to see in the future down below in the comments section, and we'll no doubt be coming back to this topic again at uh, some point very soon. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters, The Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Rajesh, Logic GR, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.